Now, now in order to handle this right, so, so, so we can so we can kind of right clearly see that well if you have a larger aperture perhaps right we can we can we can do things better right that is exactly what this Lucas Kanade Lucas Kanade method right does method okay. So, what does this Lucas Kanade method do? So, so it is introduces a spatial coherence constraint a spatial coherence constraint okay in addition to the brightness constancy assumption that we had. Now, these people bring in a spatial facial coherence constraint what it really means is that within a small window you can assume that your optical flow is roughly the same for all the pixels which is not which is not such an unreasonable assumption this is where I said smoothness 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 right I kept saying in one of the early, earlier classes also right local smoothness local smoothness see this is again local smoothness right what this means is that within a window as long as the window is small enough you can assume that all the pixels are probably moving with the same u and v. If that is not satisfied of course, you know you will have some errors, but, but wherever it is true it should be ok right. So, then what this means is if you take a window of size let us say right m by m ok. So, basically right around a pixel ok and you are, and you are trying to compute of course, optical flow at that pixel, but now you are, but now you are assuming that around it right you have the u and v. So, long as m is small, so m light you can think of some like 3 m equal to 3 or 5 right not probably more than that. So, it has to be very very local region ok. Then then uh, then this then this equation right then what we can do is you know then we can actually repeat it for all the pixels here right then what you will get is let us say i x 1 i y 1 then I will have like i x 2 i y 2 all the way up to let us say i m square no i x m square right I mean uh, there are m square pixels here right and then maybe i y m square right that many pixels I have and then I have u v right because because all of them will actually satisfy the same equation, but then here right I will have whatever i t of i t of x 1 y 1 because because the, because the temporal motion need not be the same for these pixels right and then i t of x 2 y 2 all the way up to i t of x m square y m square. So, in effect right what you have is, is a matrix of size m square by 2, 2 cross 1 and this will be like m square cross 1. And all this we can of course estimate just from the image data. So, so right, this is available. So, let us call this as a u vector is equal to b, right? And now we know kind of right how to do that. So, you can do right a transpose a u is equal to a transpose b, or in other words, right, you can do u is equal to a transpose a the whole inverse a transpose b, right? And and a transpose a is clearly right a 2 cross 2 matrix. This is just this is just just a just a 2 cross 2 matrix. But if, but, if, but if you think about what does a transpose a is right. So, what is a transpose a transpose is this i x 1 whatever right i x 2 blah 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 then i y 1 i y 2 blah 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 and then this guy right same thing ordered this way i x 1 i y 1. So, so, if you do this right so this is like uh, like the right, 2 by m square like m square by 2. So, you get actually actually 2 cross 2 matrix whose entries are simply gradient squared along x then i x i y then whatever i y i x which is the same as i x i y and summation i y square right that is what it is and what is we have seen this matrix before when did we see this gradient coming in and at and you know 2 cross 2 when did we see this matrix Harris corner detector right there it came no now the, the, the same kind of situation right is what we have here this is simply a 2 cross 2 matrix right it will have two eigen values the only catch is here right now you have to find its inverse right which then means that means that right I mean you know it has to be kind of reasonably stable right by by, by stability what we mean is right I mean you know it should not have like eigen values that are kind of see crazy in the sense that right both eigen values being kind of see very small will also mean that the invertibility is right will not be good or uh, too much of a spread in the eigen values right is also bad for example, one eigen value being very high and the other eigen value being very low is also bad. So, the best situation is to have eigen values which are both reasonably good which is when which is when you can definitely say that the condition number have you guys read about condition number at all it is like uh, right sigma singular value of max singular value by the min singular value anyway right I mean not so important right now, but but yeah, but the, the invertibility of a transpose a right invertibility of a transpose a right depends on the depends on the say, eigen values of depends on the eigen values of of a transpose a. So, 
uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, right, let us say, let us say, let us say 2 small, right, I mean lambda 1 some less than, uh, less than some epsilon, lambda 2 less than epsilon, epsilon very small, okay, not good. Okay, what, what this means is that the variance is probably coming because of some noise and not and not really because of some actual motion. Then lambda 1 uh, much much greater than lambda 2, right, not good either. Where does this happen? Where does this happen? We have seen this before. At an edge, right, we have seen this, no, Say, right, at an edge what will happen? At an edge you will have you will have right, oh, no, no, the, the, the right, I mean, no, along the edge your eigenvalues are very small, right, but across the edge is where the, is where the maximum action is, right. So, so there this we already saw when we did a corner strength and all, right, similar thing here. So, so we know that, we know that, right, so, so, so which is like, like, right, example is an edge. This example, right, where kind of, right, this can happen is over a smooth region or low sort of a texture, smooth region, okay, where, where the only action that is happening is because of some noise there not really that, 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 that there is a big change in intensity or anything, it is happening simply because there is this low texture there. Okay. Edge is where is where right this situation will occur and the ideal situation is lambda 1, uh, okay, right, lambda 1, lambda 2 both, both let us say greater than some alpha where alpha is kind of significant. Okay. That means right, these are both kind of significantly high, right. that is when that this is like a high texture region. So if you so if you actually compute the optical flow rate, this is what you will actually observe that 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 it's very reliably computed in those places where there's a lot of activity, where there's a lot of texture, and that's also true with the with the with the human being, right? Suppose I showed you uh, showed you a blank wall, and suppose I suppose I moved it in front of you, and then if I tell you how did the wall move, you can't tell because right you can't make out what moved, right? Because everything looks so smooth. Right. Only when there is texture you will know okay something happened, you rotated it, you translated it, you will say something, right. So same thing, so in optical flow when you want to kind of analyze motion patterns there should be something that should happen, that seen should satisfy. So very low texture is bad, you cannot make out much because all that you see is probably you know the, the effect of some noise out there okay. and uh, no, and that can be random. Uh, and uh, have an edge, okay. then again okay, you cannot you cannot tell exactly because, because like I said right along one direction right you do not have any information at all. And uh, the, the places that are good are any place where there is actually high texture, okay. And uh, this is what is shown in the in the I mean next uh, this one. Let's go and then see some cases like that. Yeah, let's see this situation. Ah, so, for example, right. So, if you if you have so 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 see this pixel here. That is an that is an edge, right? That is actually sitting on that on that edge of the roof, right? And therefore, right, we know that we know that right, one of one of the eigenvalues is going to be very large, and another is going to be very small comparatively. And therefore, right, that is not really a great place to kind of compute optical flow. This is also not a great place to compute optical flow simply because it's so homogeneous, right? That very difficult to make out what motion is going on there. The ideal place it right, would be kind of so it would be basically right, things like these, right, where there's a lot of texture here, here all these places, right? these are all textured regions. Therefore, at all those places you will get kind of you know, a reliable estimate of the optical flow. Okay. I think I will stop here today. Mm -hmm.